In this video I'll show you how to update your Flysky Nirvana to the latest firmware. Uh, I'll show you how to do it using the latest updater, so as opposed to setting up a profile in OpenTX. A lot of people have been complaining quite loudly uh, about the lack of support from Underground FPV. And if you actually check their website, it doesn't really exist. So uh, there are some serious concerns there, some financial concerns. A lot of people have not received what they've ordered, you know, things as little as lanyards. But if you check some of the reseller websites, they've cancelled their support for any Underground FPV stock and they're exclusively, exclusively selling Flysky. So what's the main difference between this latest firmware from Flysky uh, as opposed to the Underground FPV one? Uh, in my experience, uh, the Underground FPV one was working. There weren't really many issues with it. Uh, it was a little bit buggy, but otherwise it did work. I wanted it to do and that's really get me up in the air uh, but the Flysky version seems to have far less bugs particularly when setting up widgets it seems to be quite robust uh, it has trainer mode that works I'm not interested in that but you may be uh, and it has multi-protocol support so I've actually ordered a, a multi-protocol unit and I'll be testing that in a future video and I'm very keen to see how well that works as well it's probably also worth uh, switching over to Flysky because it looks like they will continue to provide updates as opposed to underground FPV which might be game over. That said, this video will be useful to you if you're just updating uh, your firmware in general. It doesn't have to be from Underground FPV. I'll also show you how to back up some of your content from your original uh, SD card so that you don't lose any images, any quad images, you don't lose uh, your radio settings uh, and a lot of the stuff that you may have already set up, some sounds or things like that. So I'll show you how to transfer that across or back that up at least and, and bring that back onto the new firmware. Let's do this. In order to get to your SD card and also your boot button uh, to be able to flash your uh, firmware, simply remove this bracket here, uh, just these two screws, you can see it's pretty straightforward. Then you'll have access to the button which is at the top in there uh, and also your SD card down the bottom there so you can remove that to uh, uh, back up your SD card quite easily. So I've added a link in the description that will take you straight to this particular web page. Uh, from here you can download the latest updater. Now the updater means that you don't need to set up uh, any OpenTX profiles or anything as such. You may have watched some other videos with uh, some more complicated ways of doing this. Uh, there's an updater now available and you simply download whether you need the 32 or 64 bit version depending on your own PC setup uh, and that downloads a zip file. So you'll see that will download there. Uh, then simply unzip that particular zip file uh, and once you have that extracted, I'm going to show this in folder, it's really, uh, bring that up here, uh, it's this file here that you want to run. Uh, so once it's extracted, you can run the, the updater there and that will look like this. Uh, now the first thing you want to do before you even connect your transmitter is download the SD card image. So that will then download the archive and you can specify where you'd like to download that and that will give you a copy of the latest Flysky SD card content. Once you've sorted out your SD card content and you have everything as you want it, it's time to flash the latest firmware. Uh, same updater, this time we're going to select flash as opposed to download. So we're going to flash the latest version over here. Uh, so we select that, download firmware and that will download it locally and then we select start update and this is when I plug in my transmitter. Uh, now that the update tool is waiting for connection with your uh, transmitter and you're ready to bind, uh, the first thing you want to do, plug in your USB to the back of the transmitter, it's easier that way. Uh, have it ready on the other end on the PC so that uh, you can just click it in quite easily because you're going to need two hands for this. Uh, the first, get yourself an Allen key or even a toothpick, Allen keys are the easiest, uh, flip it over and in here place that in there and you can hear, you should be able to hear a click. So I've clicked three times there. Uh, click and hold and then plug it into your PC uh, and you'll hear the, the beep sound like that uh, and then that should automatically update. Once that's done, all I do is unplug, uh, reboot uh, and that should get you the latest version. Now, if that doesn't work, uh, to open TX. if that doesn't work, then you might need to switch down, uh, switch off and remove your, your batteries from there. Uh, I find I don't need to. It's recommended that you do remove your batteries when you do reboot. Uh, I've never really needed to, uh, but if you do run into any issues, then take your batteries out uh, and then power up again. 
On the left hand side of screen I have my new FlySky SD card content and on the right hand side I have my original underground FPV backup uh, and that can be any backup that you may have. Uh, the first thing you want to do is copy across the models and the radios folder from your backup into your actual SD card and you'll see they're absent here uh, and they contain the data of your transmitter settings anything that you may have set up uh, as well as your model settings so by copying across the models for example uh, when you go to select a new model all your original models are there you may need to rebind some of these but everything else should be fine if you have any Lua scripts they'll be found in the scripts folder here if you added any additional sounds, uh, they'll be found here under sounds, obviously. Uh, but you might find that there's a, a really cool library included in this SD card. I think it's the Amber Library of Sounds, but some, some sounds that I think are better than the underground ones anyway. Uh, you'll also find that if you copy across your images directory, uh, then any photos or pictures that you may have had in your images directory is what's uh, accessible when you try to add a, an image to a model. So if you want your model to be represented by an image, uh, that'll be found here. So if you created any of those, uh, they're all there. So copy that across. Uh, and when we go down to themes, and I'll do that on both, uh, and then go to default, this is where you find all the images used in the navigation menus and such. So you'll find that one thing you may not like when you fire up your new uh, firmware uh, is that it'll have this plane as opposed to this quad. So you can drag across all of the imagery from here if you much prefer, or you can pick and choose which icons that you like um, to customize your own setting. Uh, background is your background image. So if you prefer the underground one, or if you wanted to create another one, I have another video that goes through that in great detail. Uh, but that's the, the file that you need uh, that is your background. Lastly, if you find that you're receiving an SD card error message when you first boot up your transmitter, uh, and it typically refers to the version, uh, all you need to do is whatever number is on that screen that's telling you version error, uh, go into your root directory of your SD card uh, and edit this opentx.sd card file. Uh, you may need to associate it with Notepad, and once you have, it will look like this. And whatever that number was that you saw on screen, simply type that in here and save this file and that will make that issue go away. One thing that you might find annoying is that if you're going to set up a new uh, model, if you're coming from the underground FPV version and you're going to set up a new model uh, simply by going into model select and then tap anywhere second time and create model. You'll be confronted with this wizard of sorts and it's going to give you this glider plane options. So if you find that wizard annoying and you simply want to create a model from scratch and just have it appear and then you can manually edit the settings, uh, go to your scripts directory and then delete this wizard folder. Uh, and by removing that, when you go to add a new model, it'll simply give you a blank model template.